This weight has got a height of 1400 mm, that is 1.4 meter. This has got a height of 1400 mm. And the kick tail is very, very small, only 12 mm. So, this is the built up border bridge. This built up border bridge has got two numbers of span. Right, each span has got three numbers of built up border. Right, now I am standing on the recently casted slab of span number one. So, let me show you each component of this built up border. Right, so first component that we have, see, this is the flange plate. This is the flange plate. Right, this is the top flange. Right. And this is the bottom flange. This not bottom flange. This is the web. This portion is the web. And that portion, you can see see my stick here. This is called the bottom flange, right? So if you see from the top, top over the right? This is the top top flange, right? Top flange. And below that we have the web. And below that we have the bottom flange, right? These are three plates. Now, this, this bottom flange has got one extra cover plate. Uh, see here, this is the bottom flange, right? And this, this plate, this is the bottom plate. And below this, this one, this is the flange cover plate. Or you can say additional plate to resist the bending tension, right? So top flange, weight and the bottom flange and you have the additional flange cover plate right now these are the main components on this pizza border right you see that bolts you can see those bolts right those bolts are connected to that flange splice splice plates right this has got a length of 25 meter and you cannot carry one single piece of like a flange plate right it's not possible you have to assemble so this plate and that plate is connected to that splines splice plate right and you can see that below the splines splice plate we have the wave splice plate you can see and below the wave splice plate we have the bottom flange splice plate so i think the concept is clear to all of you this flange splice plates are connected to not in bolt assembly, right? This weight, this weight has got a height of 1400 mm, that is 1.4 meter. This has got a height of 1400 mm, and the thickness is very, very small, only 12 mm. Okay, the thickness of this plate, again, in fact, the flange plate, this flange plate has also got very low thickness, uh, I mean, 20 mm thickness is there. Similarly, bottom flange plate also has a very low thickness 20 mm and this weight plate has got only 12 mm thickness but look at the height height is 1.4 mm meter that is 1400 mm that is a very good very huge height compared to the thickness now come, come here see this place this place you can see right this plate these plates and those plates were just going around all through the garter. These plates are called what? The stiffeners. Stiffeners, right? These are called the stiffeners. And I tell you that the projection here, outstanding, should not be more than 20 TQ epsilon. If I take the epsilon value as root over 250 by FI, if I take as 500, and if I multiply 20 TQ, TQ into epsilon, I'll get 167 value. But here, that is the maximum value I have to get according to the IS code. Here, this value, this value, this outstanding is 150 mm. That is less than the value prescribed by the IS code, right? And and these are the what stiffeners. And I have told you, if you have a complete idea. Allah, Can you see? This plate, this is the end bearing stiffener. End bearing. This is the end bearing stiffener. This plate. Okay. This end bearing stiffener we have to always provide. Always you have to provide. Right? To reduce the compression effect. Okay. You have to always 
provide this n band signal and these plates are called what intermediate transverse signal this plate that plate the plate those are uh, provided throughout the garden are called what mazo dekho plate bilak those intermediate plate uh, signals are called what intermediate transverse signal right and uh, and and if i see the k value here k value is what d by tw right and what is d value d is how much this d is how much 1400 mm and tw is thickness of wave 12 mm so if i divide 1400 by 12 i get how much 116 so i could say that if the k value is more than 67.7 epsilon and less than 200 epsilon then it might not provide any intermediate transverse signal but here they provided why because you again have to check the shear buckling criteria that is given in page number 59 to 60 in is 800 and 2007 right so i think the designer have checked the shear buckling criteria and accordingly they have provided this transverse intermediate transverse signal now in this bridge you have not found any horizontal stiffener right there is no there is only vertical or transverse stiffener there is no horizontal or longitudinal stiffener why because they are have to provide only if the k value is what more than 200 epsilon so if 200 in the epsilon i get almost uh, 140 value and k value is almost 116 d, uh, d by tw that means the d by tw value is less than 140 that is given in code that is why no horizontal signal is provided in this built up cutter right fine again you can see see this component this some channel section you can see right this channel sections why these are provided this channel section are provided because see above this cutter the slab will be casted see you can this is a slab right you can look this is a slab this is a slab that is recently casted on the span number 1 this bridge has got two number span the so one more span will be casted on this above these three girders right the concrete what will happen the concrete will be poured right right this concrete will get stuck inside this this, this channel section these are called shear connectors right these are called shear connectors right So these are the main component, and you can see this is this this component, this one, this one, and at the end you can see zoom ko itagnam end dot cross garder kada dakhay dia cross garder itagnam end dot cross garder. At the end you have two cross garder, and here also you have two 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 number of cross garder, right? These cross cross garders are installed here so that the whole system these three garders. as a single unit fine now again we have that cross bracing here you can see at the middle three numbers of cross bracings are there what is it provided to is installed so that the bridge as a system that as a whole right like unit doesn't get swayed right due to any horizontal load such as wind load or earthquake loading right to safeguard against the horizontal loading we have provided those three numbers of cross bracing so these are the main components of the built up girder i have explained you i think i hope the concept is clear to all of you now let me discuss about the advantages and disadvantages of this built up girder bridge against any rcc girder bridge now you can see the height of the girder that i i have already told you is here in this bridge is 1.4 meter this is a 25 meter length span bridge right if you compare this 25 meter length bridge any rcc bridge you will have the height of the girder almost 2.5 meter so you can see there is 1 meter reduction in height now what is the advantage of this reduction in height see if you want to construct any bridge in a congested area like cities right you don't have enough space to construct the approach length road right if the height is more then the length of the approach road will be more right so if we want to reduce the length of the approach road then we must reduce the height of the bridge here i have told you if, if you see the maliyong flower bridge right that is a build up water bridge uh, or sea bridge having same same 25 meter length will have a height of 2.5 meter accordingly you will have more 
land in the approach road. But here, although in spite of having enough space, see, we are constructing this bridge here in a like village area. And here you have enough land for approach road. If you increase the height also, if you construct the RCC bridge also, still you can have enough land for the approach road. Still, we are providing here built-up border bridge. Why? Because in RCC border bridge, when you cast a garter, right, you need to provide piles, wooden piles, right? These wooden piles will support the garter, and after that, you will cast the bridge. But here in this bridge, you see the, the depth of this river is very high. So you cannot you cannot put or install wooden piles here, it's not possible. The depth of this bridge is very, very high. You can see the bridge, it's uh, like a very high depth you have from the surface level of water, the depth is very high. So it's very difficult to put or install wooden piles here. That is why we have not put any wooden piles here. We have put the built up water bridge. And this built up water bridge are installed through hydraulic instrument like hydra, towers, pulleys, right? And a second advantage that we have is that the construction process is very fast compared to RCC gutter bridge. What are the disadvantages? Yeah, as I am supervising two numbers of bridges, one here is the built up gutter bridge, one I am supervising a RCC bridge. What I can say is that the cost of each gutter compared to a RCC gutter is three times or two times. Please correct me if I am wrong, but as far as I am concerned, the cost of one gutter is two to three times more than the cost of a RCC in situ RCC gutter. Please correct me if I am wrong. And second part is like you can see here the steel is always exposed to air moisture, right? If the steel is exposed to air, the rusting will take place. To prevent the rusting, we have to keep on painting from time to time. But in case of RCC breeze, the concrete covers the steel part, right? You don't need to put any painting there. But here you have to put painting from time to time. Otherwise, the steel will get rusted. So thank you. This was from me. If you have liked the video, please share and subscribe my channel, Civil Maverick. Until then, it's goodbye. Thank you.